Hey everyone. Uh, a lot of people have been interested in learning how to do some water drop photography. Uh, I figure a video is going to be the easiest way to explain what I do, how I do it, and the equipment that I use in order to create some of the images that I have. Uh, I'm not an expert by any means. This is very, very new to me. Um, but hopefully I can lend some insight into your approach and uh, hopefully allow you to gain some success doing it and have a lot of fun doing it. Um, quickly go through equipment and go through kind of my my rig that I set up. Uh, it's nothing specialized, it's stuff you have around the house so hopefully you guys can take something home from it and make some awesome images. Alright, here is the equipment that I use for, for basic setup. I have a Sigma hot shoe flash. If you can find a flash with uh, the hookup for additional power supply, I'd recommend it. It's more money, but uh, definitely worth it if you do any other macro work. Uh, remote trigger, any remote trigger will work. These are radio triggers that I use because I don't have the cable set up to hook from the Sigma flash to my camera. Uh, the remote triggers work and they work great for other applications as well. Uh, we got the Canon MPE 65mm f2.8. Uh, it's an exclusive macro lens, although any macro lens will likely do. I don't know. As I said, I'm new to this, but uh, I'm pretty sure any macro will work for you. Uh, digital SLR. This is my old 40D. I don't shoot with that. It's just for, I guess, explanation purposes. And uh, a tripod. All right, three more things that you should look at buying. Uh, food colorings, xanthan gum, and rubbing alcohol. This has 50%, but higher percentage is better. And I can explain how to incorporate those you know, a little bit further on. Okay, uh, a lot of people ask me how do I get different backgrounds and different patterns in my water drops. Well, the truth is, is that your creativity will dictate what your images look like. Um, the sky's the limit. Gift bags, they're good. They're, they provide a lot of sturdy sturdy surfaces. They're cheap. I think those are a dollar each. Uh, wrapping paper, this is two-tone wrapping paper. Red on one side, striped on the other. Same with these two rolls here. Um, Basically foam pads, a lot of kids aisles with crafts, anything that you can be creative with. Um, that is what's going to be incorporated into your image. So the more creative you are, you know, the different results that you're going to get. So every day is a little bit different. Try a lot of different things, experiment, and uh, you'll probably end up finding something out pretty neat that you didn't expect. Alright, the last few things you need. Uh, a couple of containers. One to hold the overflow of your drops and the other to actually hold your drops. Uh, you need a reservoir uh, to hold your water. In this case is a Pepsi bottle. Pepsi is better than Coke. Uh, with a couple of holes punched in the bottom of one of the little nubs. And you need something sturdy to hold it. It doesn't really matter what you use. Just something to, I guess, allow uh, the water to be moved up and down to get different heights of, of different drops. That's pretty well it. Um, pretty basic setup. It's just a matter of setting up your tripod the right way and uh, getting your focus right. And we'll try and touch on that shortly. Okay, uh, setup that we got here. Um, we have our reservoir with water. Uh, that's filled up depending on the height of the water, depends on how fast the drops will actually drop through. We have the camera on a tripod, and that camera is set up with the remote trigger hooked up to it. That remote trigger is hooked up to the radio triggers, and those radio triggers are hooked together and synced with my flash. Um, settings on the camera are, I believe, 1 50th of a second, ISO 100, and uh, F16. Um, you can change around your f-stop, but really you want as much depth of field as possible on here. Um, just because it 
the drops are wide enough specifically for this lens I'm not sure how other lenses react with their depth of field but with this one I have a very shallow depth of field so this is the way um, I have it set up uh, camera um, is <clears throat> parallel to the water surface and the reason why it is parallel to the surface is you want um, you basically when that drop ejects on its rebound it's going to go, let's just say for easy purposes of explanation, it's going to go straight up and down which means it's perpendicular to your camera. Now you want it as perpendicular as possible because if you change the direction of the camera with relation to the drop you've adjusted that depth of field and you've actually shrunk your depth of field pretty substantially so the idea here is in my opinion to get the the edges of the drops clean and crisp if you do that then it's a more appealing a drop photo um, as opposed to having you know like the top half out of focus and the bottom half in focus it'll just look um, non-symmetrical as far as focus goes so things to remember try and get your camera uh, at an angle that is perpendicular to the ejected drop um, flash power um, I use 1 8 but that's going to fluctuate depending on what kind of background you use. I'm using a flash to bounce off the backdrop and that seems to work well and that eliminates a lot of the catch lights. If you want catch lights then you go right up and point the flash directly at the drop and you'll get your catch lights. Uh, I find that on a clean type photo you'll actually see the pattern of your flash um, basically your flash screen will come through and it's not nearly as appealing but um, preference is all yours uh, those are the key things uh, adjust the height of the water depending on how tall you want drops I have uh, a crop sensor photo so I'm zoomed in or a crop sensor camera so I'm zoomed in a little bit more um, full frame sensor cameras will allow you to get taller drops um, so they might be more appealing to you, but this is uh, the rig that I, that I use and it seems to work well. Okay, so what I've done here, focus is the hardest part of this whole thing. Getting in focus takes the most time and the most patience, but once you do it, um, you'll be pretty happy with the results. Uh, things will be pretty tight. The easiest way I found focusing, um, Ideally, live focus will help you, but because I'm on radio triggers, it doesn't allow me to do that uh, with mirror lockup for some weird reason. Uh, so I have to do it through the viewfinder. And the easiest way I found to do that is use uh, something inanimate that allows a little bit of pooling on top. This is an old kitchen spoon. Basically put that underneath your drop, kind of close to the, to the surface of the water that you're going to be working with. And what you want to do, I found the easiest way to approach this is on that pool of water that forms, focus a little bit further past the catch light. The catch light will be in sharp focus, but the idea here is not to get the catch light in focus. The idea here is to get the outsides of the drop in focus. Um, but this is photographic art, so you can do whatever you want. Um, that's just my preference. So if you want the outside of the edge of the drops, the easiest way that I found is to focus in on the drops, but the, or the catch lights, and just bump it a little bit further and that'll give you a good starting point. And the only way to do that is to actually physically shift your camera back and forth. Um, I shoot, this particular lens is in strictly manual mode. It doesn't even have a manual focusing ring. It literally, is a body movement you need to move the camera back and forth in order to adjust the focus so other lenses may offer um, a little bit of a I guess an easier way to do this but like I said I'm limited to the tools that I have and I work with what I have so um, I guess my method works well for me some other people might find other methods work a little bit better so I've kind of rigged this up with the way that I want colored water in this particular instance I want it as black as possible so I've mucked together green food coloring red food coloring blue food coloring to give it kind of as dark uh, or as dirty of a water as I can get 
Um, in this case, it's going to be a highly reflective uh, semi-black surface. And I've used uh, some polka dot gift bags behind me in order to um, in order to fire away. So biggest thing you want to do is just time it out, wait for that drop to fall. Time it right and fire away. Best thing to do is fire a couple, just because drops are dynamic, they bounce in and around, they shoot and forward, backward, side to side. Get a good idea where things are at and then make necessary adjustment after. Um, it shouldn't take you that long to get dialed in, it might take you a few. Be patient with it, walk away if you need to, um, but come back to it. It's worth the effort, it's fun, and your possibilities are endless. So. Fire away, see what you get. You might get some cool images. Hopefully you do. Um, and yeah, by all means, if you have any questions, feel free, fire me a message. Okay, one last point uh, regarding the xanthan gum and the alcohol. Um, they are used as thickening agents in your water. They change the viscosity of your water, which ultimately changes the way your drop structure is formed. Um, at least that's my understanding. Uh, the xanthan gum can be mixed in with the alcohol. Uh, I use a ratio of about one eighth of a teaspoon to uh, about 100 mils of alcohol. It's not going to mix in well, but it will start incorporating together. And basically, the idea here is to break up the xanthan gum into smaller particles so it will absorb a little bit better into the water. Mix it up with a whisk. Uh, once you have that whisked up, then mix in your water. Mix it again with your whisk really well. It's going to still be chunky and, and frothy. Pour that off into a cheesecloth or other filtering material. Old nylons work. Uh, that's fine. You're going to end up with a, a cloudy liquid and we'll call that your stock solution. Um, once you have your stock solution, then that can be further diluted down. 10%, 20%. I used 50% roughly. Um, and uh, yeah, they had the possibilities are whatever kind of ratio you want. So feel free to experiment. There's an endless amount of different ratios and possibilities you can do um, to give your, your drops different structure, thinner columns, um, fatter drops. Uh, the rule of thumb here is experiment, have fun with it. Uh, that's about it. Um, I can't think of anything else that um, might be helpful. Um, feel free, um, ask questions, send me a message, uh, I'll be able to help you out as best I can. Uh, hopefully you have good luck, uh, hopefully you have a little bit of the, the patience needed. Uh, the end results are worth it, uh, put in some time and effort and I think you'll be pretty happy with uh, what you come up with. So good luck and have fun. Thanks.